Oh, what a lovely tea party. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. I am super excited because, man, holy hell, what a month. What a day, actually, right after. I mean, just a couple hours after recording and uploading my video on the Jaeger M, I checked my tracking and this, <laughs> this was sitting in my mailbox. Now, you guys know, if you watched my previous video that I am a huge fan of the EMP EDC Nimble. It's one of my most carried knives. You see it on my Instagram all the time. It's a fidget monster. It's a shit ton of fun. You can uh, deploy it in, you know, like a million different ways. You can do anything that you want. And it's super fun and it's a great compact carry. But what actually got me initially super interested in the Nimble was when they were announcing this knife, the Nimble X, the larger version. I'm like, oh, I got to get one of those. Well, I had missed the pre-order and I wasn't able to get it. So I was able to get this. And it's, it's just, if you don't have a regular Nimble, you absolutely must have one. And having this, so far does not take away from my love of that. So yesterday in the mail, I was so, so happy to see this. I've been talking uh, to John Rusk, the designer, the owner of EMP EDC, uh, and lamenting about missing the uh, pre-order. And he was kind enough to help me out. So here, my friends, is the first production run of the EMP EDC Nimble X. <laughs> and I got it to match my other one. Uh, when you get the uh, knives, you get a cool set of stickers. I still think the frag, the, the grenade, is the coolest one. And safely ensconced within this magnetized lid box is going to be your new knife. It's just awesome. Uh, it really is. And uh, what I decided to opt for, I wanted to have, obviously the knife to match in the frag pattern and the all stonewashed variation. But on this one, I chose to go with what they're calling their sheep's foot blade. It's really a spear point. It really comes down to, oh, I almost ran my finger along the edge. How dumb was that? Uh, it really comes down to a spear point. Um, that's really what, uh, what I look at it as. It's not really a sheep's foot by almost any definition. Uh, but it is a, uh, a different blade style than the spear point, which is the, the original version. And when I give the specs for this, I'm going to give you a comparison uh, verbally uh, on the differences there. You can see very clearly that there are differences in the size here. Um, you'll be surprised to know the thickness is the exact same. And... Here's what's really, really cool about this. With this knife, the original 3-inch uh, Nimble, I have a preference, even though my NOAA preference is uh, f to use a flipper tab, my preference is to reverse flick it, even though I've never, I've never ever liked the reverse flick thing. I always thought it was awkward because everybody does it like this. They're, they're, they, they're not gripping the knife, so I'd always look at it and go, God, that's so awkward watching them do that. I'm still holding on to the knife with pretty much the same grip that I have, you know, when I'm flipping. So I'm still gripping it. It's not going to fly out of my hands in some weird way like everybody that does this. It could just 
there's there's nothing there holding it. Um, but with this knife, because of the size of it, uh, I find it easier to do that than to shift the knife up in my hand to access the flipper tab. This one, and this is another reason why I'm so excited about it, is perfect for using the flipper tab. It's just the right spot, very easy to flip it, boom. Can I still flick it? Absolutely. You can still thumb flick it. You can still slow roll it. Uh, if you wear skirts, you can still uh, front flip it. I'm just not a good front flipper because I don't like front flippers, so I don't practice it. Um, and the whole skirt thing, yes, is a joke. I say it all the time. Don't get your panties in a bunch. Ah, see, yeah, there's another one. And you've also, <laughs> you've also got this elongated fuller that doesn't exist on the spear point version. It just, it's just the, uh, the, the recessed thumb hole. So you have more access to get to it uh, from different areas of the blade as well. But this one uh, is absolutely much more of a flipper friendly variant. So let's talk about uh, the knife. We're gonna talk about the specs very quickly. I'm gonna get those out of the way very quickly. And then we're gonna get into my overall thoughts. So let's move this off to the side, put it where you can see the whole thing and then Bam! Here are the specs. We're looking at a titanium frame lock with the frag pattern and the all stonewashed variant. So stonewashed blade and stonewashed titanium frame. Overall length is 8.1 inches versus the 7 inches of the original Nimble. Uh, let's see, the blade uh, blade length is 3.5 inches versus 3.1 inches on the original. Blade height is 1.4 inches versus 1.2 inches. It is flat ground like the original. Blade steel is M390 like the original. Handle thickness is uh, 48 thou, uh, 0.48 inches, which is the same uh, body thickness uh, as the original. The clip backspacer pivot and hardware are all titanium and there are many different anodized options that you can choose when you purchase the knife. Uh, there's ceramic bearings against steel washers so the bearings are not going to be wearing into the titanium pockets which is great. Ceramic detent, steel lock bar insert, all the hardware on there is T8 Torx and the price is $350 and by the way they do offer Sezzle. So even when you're doing these pre-orders, and by the way, they took $50 off for the pre-order, so it was $299. Uh, they do offer Sezzle, so you could break it up into four payments. That's a great idea. The OEM for these, once again, like the originals, is QSP. They're doing a fantastic job. You guys might remember QSP from the QSP Penguin, which has been extraordinarily popular as well. And a knife that I still enjoy in my collection, just not nearly as much as this. And the designer is John Rusk. And John, I got to tell you, is a super cool dude. Really nice. Really down to earth. Had a chance to uh, to chat with him uh, a few times. And uh, he's just a super eager, super excited knife guy that uh, lucked out into designing some of the coolest friggin' knives on the planet teamed up with a great OEM that nailed his designs and gave them great actions, superb construction. It just everything's been great. I mean, I have been carrying the living hell out of my original three inch and I have zero, absolutely zero complaints about that knife. Let's take a look at the weight. We'll break out the scale. I'm trying to make this a fairly quick video because I don't want to take up too much of your time. So you get 4.3 ounces on this new Nimble X, 4.3 versus 3.7. That is not a huge difference, even though the knife feels substantially larger, but it's still not unwieldy. It's, oh God, that action. Just look at that. We'll release the lock and stop and not, not, not hold the lock and let you just see the blade drop on its own. I mean, you almost have to do nothing, just a little bit of gravity, and it works great. Uh, just it's it's a super attractive knife. I really like this blade shape a lot. Um, I can't say which blade shape I like more. I like them equally, and I figured that was going to be the case. I love the spear point. It's a great look, uh, and this is a great look. This has a lot of belly to it, so it's going to be very useful for cutting. Still got a great tip on it, great little point there. It's going to be useful for everything. I'm a big fan of the fuller running off the edge of the blade. 
It gives it a very dramatic look. I'm a big fan of that. Still love their pivot design. I think it's fantastic having their logo in the pivot instead of big billboards on the blade is the way to go. It really, really, really is. Uh, minimal hardware. There's only the, 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 the two screws back here uh, for the backspacer. Backspacer, by the way, is individually numbered. Then you have uh, your backspacer hardware there. Uh, one more body screw here. This is for your steel lock bar insert, and that obviously is the other side of the pivot. Um, and I think it looks great along with the frag pattern, so it, it doesn't take away. Yeah, okay, you know, we all love to have blind screwed uh, pocket clips, but on this design, it doesn't bother me at all. Maybe if I had the smooth body, the all, uh, was it, I think it's a bead blasted or stonewashed smooth body, you know, it might detract a little bit more, but I, I really don't know, but I, I, I certainly don't mind it in this configuration. So you've got the standard flipper tab there. You have the front flipper tab, which they're also calling a glass breaker. Uh, the jimping, actually that feels like it's a little bit more grippy. No, it's about the same. Uh, it just felt, you know, it is, it's a tiny bit more grippy on the jimping. So I guess maybe front flicking it might be a little bit easier. Uh, front flipping it, I should say. Uh, so you've got that deployment method, that deployment method, you have the uh, elongated window in the blade so you can uh, finger flick it, you can thumb flick it, you can slow roll it. So you have many different options for deployment and that really I think was the secret to the nimble success. People just went, I like having lots of options to flip my knife open. And the action is certainly fantastic. And it's not just the way of the blade, it's, it's the excellence in the construction because this blade is much, much lighter and it's still nice and smooth. It takes a little bit more because there's just not as much weight, obviously. But yeah, it's, uh, they're, they're super crazy smooth, really, really well made. And you know what? They're not crazy expensive. I would tell anybody that has that that uh, $300 to $350 budget, you absolutely need to buy one of these. You need to own one of these. Um, it, it's just fantastic. And now that there's a larger size, I think it's going to satisfy an even larger audience. Let's give, let's give a size comparison here. Uh, once again, I will put it up against the original Nimble so that you can see that difference. Uh, it does look quite substantially different. We'll put it up against the Jaeger M, which also just arrived. So actually, you know, it's kind of an in-between size there, isn't it? So it's uh, the Jaeger M is just a little bit bigger than the Nimble and a little bit smaller than the Nimble X. That's a really good comparison right there for uh, the hundreds of you that own the, uh, the Jaeger. You'll know exactly what you're getting. Put it up against the Varga Knives VBR, a lot of people own the VBR. And that, let's bring it down here. Virtually identical. The VBR is just a teeny tiny little bit larger. Just a tiny little bit. Well, if we put them pivot to pivot, the blade length is the same. So the difference is going to be in the handle or so it appears. And then against uh, another QSP produce knife against the QSP Penguin. For those of you that own the Penguin, uh, you know the uh, size difference there, and I'll put it up against the regular Nimble as well. So there you see it. The, uh, the Penguin is almost identical in size to the regular Nimble, and obviously the uh, Nimble X is larger. So all in all, what are my overall thoughts on this knife? It is everything that I was hoping it was going to be, to be perfectly honest. I wanted it to still be lightweight, and I'm very, very happy to see that it is. I wanted it to be easier to use the flipper option, and it really is. I really like the blade shape. I find that to be uh, another attractive feature on the knife. It's virtually identical to my original, which was exactly uh, how I ordered it. I wanted it to look the exact same, but you know what? It needs it needs a little bit of, I don't know, a little bit of pizzazz, a little bit of pow. Let's see what we can do about that. Hold on one second. I think, uh, I, think I got something for that.
Here, I think this will be much, much better. Oh yeah, add a little sprinkle of color there. Ooh. Color of royalty, baby. Oh yeah. So that's one of the beautiful things about getting into so many of these micro brands that have been popping up lately. They're able to express such creativity and bring out tons and tons of great options. And even though you're not buying a custom knife, you're able to some degree to customize it to your personal tastes. Now, while I think that the standard, you know, all titanium look is fantastic, I wanted to just make this one pop just, just a little bit more, just make it a little bit different. And perhaps one day it'll just be to justify which of the two I'm going to carry. Because even though they are different sizes, they are different blade shapes, I think there's going to be, you know, a little bit of competition every now and then. Which one am I going to carry? Which one do I really feel like carrying? Picking them both up and flicking them and feeling them and, and trying to make up my mind. And, you know, maybe a little bit of purple is going to make that difference for me. So again, when we look at this, it's not a monstrous difference between the original and the X. But it's just, it's just enough where if you felt that the original was a little bit too small, maybe you don't always want to choke up into that finger choil. Maybe you like holding it back here and you felt, ah, eh, that, that needs a little bit more. Now you've got that. Now it's right there in your hand. And if you do choke up, you've got, you know, a little bit extra hanging out in the back. And it is nice having the different options in the blade shapes. Because it really depends on how you're going to be doing your cutting. And one of the things I love about this also is now the jimping goes so far that, you know, if, if you're... If you're really getting into something and you need a little bit of index finger uh, to give you a little bit of stability, the jimping goes far enough that you've got some grip on your index finger. And it's not really uh, the same way on this one. You're, you're just barely in front of the jimping on the original uh, three inch. So that's one thing. I think I made the pivot just a hair tighter than it was originally yeah it's not dropping the exact same so i'll let it break in for a few days and if it doesn't drop like it did before i'll just back it off just a just a hair just a, a wee little bit but yeah another thing that i really like as i mentioned before is the fact that i can use the flipper tab much more easily not that it's terribly difficult on the three inch but i do prefer flipping almost always on every knife and having that option without having to scoot the knife that far forward in my hand really is great. Because I like to have my thumb right about here locked in so I've got a good grip on the knife. And do my flipping. And with this one, with the little guy, it's just, it's, I just have to bring it up just a little bit more in order to access it properly. And, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. And like I said, I've, I've really gotten to... In, enjoy the the feeling of how it deploys with the middle finger flick on that particular version and it feels just as good on this one not sure if, how lefty friendly it is although i really don't see an issue with that because i mean yeah you're not really going to be applying that much pressure on the lock bar. I think everything is just as accessible. This is going to be tragic. I'm not going to be able to do this. Yeah, see, that's, that's, I, I don't like not having that full grip on a knife when I flip it open. So that was terribly awkward with the left hand, but with the right hand, that's, uh, it's fantastic. So anyway, that's my thoughts. I think if you've already got an original Nimble, do you absolutely need the Nimble X? Probably not, but it's going to give you an excuse to get into a different blade shape, a different finish, a different flavor. Maybe you're going to do the uh, the smooth body. Maybe you're going to do the uh, the DLC. 
Maybe you're going to do some fancy color options in the, uh, in the hardware. And it gives you an excuse to go ahead and have the second knife. But also, if you've had any issues whatsoever with going, I love my nimble, but I just wish it was a hair bigger. I can't use it for the harder cutting tasks. I don't have the same grip. Or I just, for whatever reason, wish it was a little bit bigger than the X. It's going to be perfect. It's not going to be so much larger that you're like, whoa, this thing is unwieldy and it's an alien feeling as compared to my original. It's only a little bit larger. I know visually it really seems like it's probably a lot larger than it is, but it really is the perfect step up. 0.4 inches, just under a half an inch larger on the blade. It's just right. If they had gone to 3.7, 3.9, or 4 inches, I think it would have been too much of a difference. Think of that leap between a small Sabenza and a large Sabenza. It really is a huge leap. And, you know, if you're used to one, the other one feels really weird or really, really different at least. If you're used to carrying the small, the large Sabenza feels really, really big. If you're used to carrying the large Sabenza, the small Sabenza seems too small. And to have that sweet spot right in the middle, I think that's where John really excelled here. And I'm sure he labored over that decision for quite a while. Do I go this size or that size? Is that too big? Is that too small? Is going only a little bit bigger a large enough difference for someone to justify buying a second knife? I mean, there's a lot of concerns when you're dealing with these different sizes. So I'm sure that wasn't very easy for him. I think he nailed it. I think this was really the perfect size to go with. It's just right. It's that Goldilocks size. It'll still allow you to love your original. I don't think that it takes away from it. Um, you may not want to do what I did, which was to, to have them matching. You may want to have different finishes because, again, it's going to give you yet another reason to choose this one over this one for what you're going to carry that day uh, and vice versa. So that's that's only, you know, it's a choice that only you can make. It's a personal uh, personal kind of thing. I'm happy with my choice. I'm happy with just that slight deviation with the hardware being purple anodized. Uh, he also does teal and blue, and I think there's gold, and there's all kinds of different choices. And don't forget, you can always uh, deal with Fanatic Edge. They do a great job in personalizing and customizing knives, especially if you get one of the plain ones instead of the frag. Man, you could do, they can mill patterns that you want, you know, spirographs and, and, and stuff like that. Um, and, and they could do different anodizing, multi-tone anodizing, different blade finishes, all kinds of neat shit. So I think what you've got with, whether you get the Nimble or the Nimble X, I think you've got a great platform for individualizing the knife to your tastes, whether you're getting whatever is being offered at the time directly, or you're customizing it, or you're buying additional hardware later on. There are so many ways to make this yours that it's almost like having a custom knife for significantly less. If this were a, a handmade custom knife that there's no differences, the exact same materials, the exact same configuration, everything else, this would be between $600 and $1,000 depending on whose name is on the blade and how much their popularity is going for those days and uh, how big of a fanboy club they've got. You know, there's always those considerations. But on average, this would be about a $600 knife if it were custom. Um, you could easily see, see it going to about $800. And by buying this in a production variation and then just customizing it a little bit or just ordering it however you wanted it, you're saving so much money. And I really honestly feel that the quality is fantastic. I enjoy carrying my original. I'm going to enjoy carrying the larger one as well. So I'm not here to tell you, just buy the X, just buy the X. Figure out which size is best for you or buy both. Because I really think that either way you go is a winner. But then there's a problem, isn't there? Because he's announced the Nimble T, the Tanto version. Y'all know I'm a Tanto whore. I had them all my life. 
yeah, there's going to be that temptation. Oh, yeah, and he just sneak peeked another variation that's going to be coming out. This is going to be hard if you're trying to save money. If you're trying to buy a house in the next year or a new car or, I, I don't know, a mail order bride, I think John's going to get in your way a little bit because he's going he's gonna to nibble at that savings just a little bit, $300 at a time, $400 at a time, but it's so well worth it. It's so much fun getting into such... It's not just the regular hobby of, of, of collecting knives. It's You've got a fidget toy here. You've got a tool here. You've got a piece of man jewelry here. You've got a conversation piece here. You've got so many things wrapped up into one knife. I think that's why it's such a success. I think that's why it is. So anyway, uh, whatever your enjoyment of deployment is, I told you I was going to be sneaking that in a lot more. Whether it's front flipping, regular flipping, finger flicking, thumb flicking, slow rolling, gravity drop, whatever it is, this, these knives do it all. And they do it in a really enjoyable way. I love their stone wash. I'm not really a stone wash person. But when the stone wash is done really well, I like it. Yeah, because it hides some of the wear marks. This is because of its price point, absolutely one of the knives that you're going to use more often. Maybe you're not going to pull out that three, four, five, six, seven thousand dollar custom and uh, go strip wiring with it and uh, cut cardboard and cut zip ties and shit. But you're going to grab your three hundred knife, three hundred dollar knife, and do those things with it. So why not make it something that you're going to enjoy having in your pocket, and it's going to be fun to play with when you're bored. You know, that's, that's a good way of looking at it, I suppose. Anyway, I'm out of here for now, guys. Thank you, as always, for joining me. Uh, I will be uploading more content again soon. I have the, uh, the Winter Blade Co. Factor coming. I'm very excited about that. Uh, there's a few surprises on the way. And uh, don't forget, as always, I, I'm always giving away free knives to my Patreons. If you want to become a patron and, and uh, you know, support the channel and have the opportunity to win free EDC gear, which includes knives and swag and other great stuff. The next giveaway I'm doing in about a week, you're going to get two free knives. You're going to get a Nessie and a Luna. They're both fantastic. And I might find something else to drop in there just for the just for shits and giggles. So thank you guys that, that are members of Patreon. And for those of you that are signing up, good luck to you. And I'll see you on the next video. Yeah, I fuck you.